everyone is going live today i have been feeling very unlike myself i wanted to share this just in case anybody else experiences anxiety or anything that is similar i will be having my mumu here he helps me he's like my support animal yes i'm a grown woman i have stuffed animals I highly recommend uh because kids are definitely onto something when they like they go out to different places hey chesley and they go out in public and to places that may not feel comfortable for them and then they bring their stuffed animal and it's just it's comforting to have something that you are familiar with when you're doing something that you're unfamiliar with so yeah i'm i've been feeling really really anxious uh yesterday was a tough day for me but i'm really really happy that it happened i believe that a lot of the days where i feel maybe unlike myself things do come up and they bubble up to the surface so that they can be cleared and released and yeah that was definitely a day yesterday in which i felt that way i woke up I woke up super early, Cameron and I had to schedule something and drop off the car to go to the mechanics, which is already kind of anxiety inducing. And I gave myself very little time. I am so blessed in that I usually have as much time as I would like in order to show up for myself and take time for myself. And I am usually not rushing anymore when I was you know, maybe a couple years back and my lifetime before that, I was just rushing all of the time. And I feel like that is really anxiety inducing, is rushing. And I believe yesterday when I was rushing, I was rushing doing the things that make me feel good. Like something that I do in the morning is I do my makeup, I put glitter on pretty much every day. I do my hair, I put on an outfit that feels like me, and because I was rushing so hard, I didn't have much time to do any of those things. I rushed, and part of the routine for me is taking my time and doing those things, and I just didn't allow myself the time. And that basically set the tone for the entire day. And... We dropped off the car at the mechanic. I was rushing to drive Cameron to work because he had to be there on, t on time. I went to this restaurant by myself because, uh, hey Andre, because, thank you, sending you love too. So Fridays are my solo date days. They're usually days in which I, ironically, I am able to fill up my cup and do everything that I need to do in order to feel my best and be able to send out love to other people because that's that's how you do it is by filling myself up I'm able to pour into other people and it was yesterday was just yesterday essentially was a day of It was a lesson in embodiment, embodying who I would like to be, who being the change that I wish to see, that kind of thing. And basically, I was so far out of that. I was so far out of that, that these things that I was feeling really needed to come up in order for me to release them and do other things. So basically, I was just going, it felt like I was going a million steps backwards yesterday. And I'm usually, like, feeling so confident. I'm usually wanting to make eye contact with other people. I'm usually wanting to send love and smile and recognize the divine in other people. And it feels amazing. But I felt so the opposite yesterday. And it was just rough. It definitely was helpful, though, 
to see the things that I can change and you know it's like a pendulum when I swing this way it's like okay prioritizing making the time for myself is definitely a lesson that I learned it's really important for me to prioritize that time and it's not that I didn't have enough time it's that I rather I slept rather than taking care of myself which is fine and you know I'm choosing to be graceful with myself for that and then I went to breakfast and was just not acting myself I was avoiding I there's nothing wrong with this by the way there's nothing wrong with this I was just not acting myself and I was avoiding eye contact I didn't want to be seen and I just didn't want to be noticed and I wanted to kind of hide in my cocoon even though I was out in public and like I chose to be out in public I still didn't want to be like seen I felt very insecure and it's not that I cared about what other people thought of me or what other people how other people perceive me or how I looked because I didn't feel that's another thing like usually the me doing things for myself my makeup my hair my outfit wearing an out all of those things feeling like me those things usually add 10 points and they do fill up my cup but because I didn't have enough time to do those things I didn't feel prideful of what I was like I didn't feel prideful of those things because I didn't take my time doing those things like I usually do so I felt insecure and I was feeling very low of myself and it was definitely being projected out into my reality because I didn't want anybody else to notice me and then I was given another another obstacle and because I was feeling so low, it was really, it was a really tough, tough time. And this is what happened. So I was sitting down and this gentleman, this gentleman came over and sat down next to, not the, not the table next to me, but the table over. And he was sneezing and coughing and kept sneezing and coughing. And I, I have been making a lot of plans and I really would rather not get sick and I would really rather not get anybody else sick either. Of course, it could have been allergies. I was kind of making an assumption. And I was contemplating what the best thing to do was. And I was making it a really big deal in my mind. Like, to me, it was... It was a giant hurdle. Because it's like, do I, do I do what I usually do, which is I just sit there and I am too afraid to hurt anybody else's feelings to move. So I just sit there and I risk getting sick myself. Or do I do what I think, you know, someone would do? Like I asked myself if, if no one cared if I moved, what would I do? And the answer was I would move. And I've, I've made so many decisions in my life that have been based on how other people would perceive me and being this people pleaser. And I didn't want to be this people pleaser anymore. My intentions weren't to hurt anybody, but it was to make a decision that felt good for me regardless of what how other people felt around me. The ultimate ultimate lesson of that was like I'd rather unintentionally hurt someone else it wasn't my intentions but if they feel that way that's on them I'd rather unintentionally hurt someone else versus intentionally hurting myself so that's kind of where I went with it and I decided to move my seat I didn't say anything nothing like that I just decided to move my seat and uh I did and I was feeling okay and then I made eye contact with that gentleman who I was sitting next to who was coughing and sneezing. And then I started feeling really, really bad. And then I made eye contact with another gentleman who witnessed what happened. And I started feeling really bad. 
And without me consciously knowing it, I made so many assumptions and so many stories in like a split instance, like, like just like that. And this is what the story is. So when I was in middle school, I used to dye my hair a lot of funky colors. My hair is up. I'm, I'm using uh, heatless curlers right now and, you know, not caring what I look like because it really doesn't matter. And when I was in middle school, of course, like the most awkward, insecure time of my life, I had previously dyed my hair blue. And then the blue faded to green, and I didn't like the green, and I dyed it black. And in the cafeteria, which is, it's interesting because this is in a restaurant where like food, stuff like that, and I'm feeling insecure, I'm feeling the way that little Lizzie felt, not because of my hair, my hair is green, <laughs> coincidentally, but that's not why I was feeling insecure. And in the cafeteria when I was in eighth grade, these people, that's like kind of when it would happen that other kids would be like, you have green hair and they would make fun, make fun of my hair and I felt even more insecure. So <clears throat> I basically projected that story onto what was happening. I said, I, in my story, in my mind, I basically was like, okay, this boy who is sneezing and coughing is me. The other guy who is witnessing, he's just witnessing the bullying that's going on. And then I felt like the bully just just for moving my seat to another space because that made me feel more comfortable. And then ah, uh, I felt even more insecure and more shameful than I had previously already. The universe was sending me a lot of tests and it's like... Just throwing them all at me, which I'm really grateful for, but it was rough. And a lot of the way that I'm able to... I had my journal. A lot of the way that I'm able to process my emotions and see them more objectively and see them for what they are is by journaling, is by recording videos, seeing myself and looking in the mirror. It's kind of confirmation that I'm a human too, and it's not... I feel like we're, we are the people that we see the least because we see from in here, you know? So being able to see myself in another way, in other ways is really, really helpful. Uh, so that's kind of what I was doing. And then of course, I'm rushing to go grab Cameron because the mechanic is like, hey, I want you to come down to the mechan to the mechanic store and check out your car. Which, all of these are first word problems. I I'm aware. Uh, I'm not complaining. I'm really grateful for all of what happened. This is That's what I want to say. Of course, it's bringing up a lot of, a lot of anxiety now because I'm kind of re reliving it a little bit right now. But we went to the mechanic store. And I was nervous about that, like, what mechanic calls you and is like, hey, I need you to come check this out without telling you what's wrong. So my mind was creating a bunch of stories there. And we went down there and it was fine, better than I thought it would be. I was trying to continue to fill up my cup afterwards, like I needed, because getting my nails done is 10 points. So after that, I scheduled an appointment to get my nails done. I took a shower, I washed my hair, uh, which is the first time in a while that I've done that, I won't lie. And I took a bath and I was just trying to catch up. I just was trying to fill up my cup so hard, but it was just, it was just not working and this anxiety kept persisting. And I was like, gosh. And then last night, Cameron came home he ended up getting food, which hanger was probably another part of why I was feeling so anxious. And we just, I decided that I just wanted to be comfortable and I wanted to go back to my creature comforts and just sit and lay in bed, which there's nothing wrong with this, any of this that I'm saying. 
So I decided to, we were going to lay in bed, we ate food in the bed, and we watched TV, which is something that I would do every single day before. And there's nothing wrong with it. But for me, I was trying to feel better. I was trying to feel better by doing things that just weren't really ways that were going to make me feel better. I was trying to feel better by doing things that I'm used to and that I'm comfortable doing. But in the long run, it really didn't make things better. Uh, For example, I was on my phone a lot and I was watching a lot of like YouTube shorts and things like that and short form media. I was just obsessively looking and obsessively trying to find something that made me feel better. And it just made me feel worse until the universe was like, okay, you need to get off your phone. And then my phone died. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to get out of bed and charge my phone. And then I started watching TV, watching The Office, something that has also brought me a lot of comfort. I watch The Office a lot, even still. But the way that I was doing it was more in a way that I didn't want to be alone with my thoughts. I was like... I just need to steer clear away from my thoughts as much as I possibly can. And that was by doing things that were distractions. And being on my phone obsessively and watching all of these short form media and shorts. And I I used to fall asleep to the television a lot. And I usually don't do that. Because I've gone so far that other way, the pendulum has swung where I'm just in bed all at some point in my life, maybe like a year ago, maybe less than that. I was just in bed, actually not a year ago. I would say maybe four or five months ago. I was just in bed. Aw. Thanks, friend. Um, I hope this is helpful. Uh, I was just in bed, not doing anything watching TV, smoking all day. I just couldn't even get out of bed to do anything. So I've, I've swung that way so much, so much so that I have kind of now not allowed myself to have a TV in the bedroom anymore because it wasn't necessarily healthy for me at that time. Of course, I think everything happens for a reason and I needed to experience that in order to be like, okay, I'm ready to try something new, but yeah, I was definitely like kind of going back to old, old ways and old things that felt comforting, that felt safe and because I'm so used to it, but it really, in reality, it really didn't help and it made me feel even more anxious and Last night I was having a really hard time because I was like, okay, I want, my ego self was like, I want to fall asleep with the TV on because I do not want to be alone with my thoughts, which in the past I've had a really hard time with, but even like recently I'm not afraid of those kinds of things, but yesterday was just like, it felt, I wasn't going backwards, but it felt like I was. So I was like, do I keep the TV on and do what my ego wants me to do? Or do I turn it off because I know that that's what my higher self really needs and really wants me to do? And I hear like this thing. It's interesting because it's not audio. It's like in my, it's like in my mind and it was like, turn off the screens. And I was like, all right. So I turned off my screen and what I do because I've learned that obstacles and challenges in my life are really lessons for me to grow and to learn. And I would ask my higher self, what was all of this for? What is the point of me having this super anxious day? And releasing the outcome, releasing what I think. Yes, exactly. Higher self is intuition. And at least in my in my mind. <laughs> um, but I was asking my higher self, what was the lesson 
and then it came very clear to me like embodiment and then I kind of what I do when I go to bed also is I kind of run through my day like I go from from point a to point b and like from start to finish and see like what happened that day I do my best to celebrate myself which that's another thing that I didn't embody was I was not celebrating myself at all uh, I wasn't being super mean to myself which is amazing usually I would be really really harsh on myself which is nothing wrong with that either it's all a part of it but I just wasn't celebrating myself and wasn't loving the, myself the way that I really needed and the insecurity that I felt in that morning was just snowballed into something so much bigger. And it really impacted my whole day. And it, the lesson was embodiment because I wasn't embodying the person that I would like to be. I wasn't embodying the change that I wish to see. I wasn't embodying, you know, my, my higher self. And I've been reading these books. They're called The Up. I've been reading these books by Paul Selig, who he ooh, he doesn't he doesn't even write the books. He channels these books from they call them the guides, and they're up in the ethers, and they're here to kind of show us the way. So if you are ever if you're watching this, if you're watching this live, if you're watching the playback, I highly recommend wa reading Paul Selig's books. They have completely transformed my life. And in Paul Selig's books, he writes, or the guides write through him, about the upper room. The idea that heaven is not a place that you go to when you die. It's actually a place that you, it's what you experience when you are in the physical plane. Heaven doesn't exist after you die. It's, it exists now. It's a, it's a matter of being able to align energetically to that vibration, to that high vibration. This is where it gets woo-woo. I mean, <laughs> if this whole thing hasn't been woo-woo. But being able to align to that high vibration and align to the upper room and align to that heaven um, and that kingdom is kind of... It's, it's up to us. Uh, this might be... No, I won't. I won't. I won't cast a spell, but how we choose to live is up to us. It is a choice how we do things. And that's kind of why, you know, previous me would kind of blame everything else. I would blame the time. I don't have enough time. And I would be the victim to time. And I would be the victim to other people and how they felt about me and how they perceived me. But I'm kind of understanding that things are more of a choice now. And the choice I made yesterday was to sleep instead of taking care of myself, which I'm really grateful for. Again, I really am. And the choice was to not allot my time and give myself that time that I really needed in order to fill my cup. So the choice that I made was to not fill my cup and have an empty cup and kind of keep going with that. And feeling like I was going backwards. So the embodiment lesson for me was like, and it's, it's funny because I, yesterday was the day I was feeling all this, all the, these things, all of this anxiety. And that the night before I finished one of those books that I'm talking about. And it was like, okay, it's not going to be comfortable when you, when you are up leveling and you're kind of awakening to new information. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so freaking glad. This makes me happy. When you're up leveling to more higher levels, right? It is so uncomfortable and it can be incredibly uncomfortable. Life is not meant to be this safe, comfortable place where you just stay small and you just kind of shut the world off to yourself. It's like, it is meant to be uncomfortable. Some of these things, oh, thank you. I am I am only a reflection of you, Kiwi Swirls. <laughs> um, shit. <laughs> I 
yeah, it's not... <sighs> when you experience new levels of consciousness, new new levels in energy and vibration, and you keep going up and up, there there is going to be a lot of resistance because the ego doesn't want to go there. It doesn't want to go to the unknown. And that's exactly what I was experiencing yesterday. And that's why I say that the embodiment was the lesson because I was embodying the ego. I wasn't embodying my intuition or my higher self or what the upper room means because I was just... right kind of resorting back to the to the back you know going backwards it felt like uh so this is this is in case you are feeling any anxiety or discomfort there is a big chance that you are up leveling and the ego fights so hard right before you're about to get to that next level the ego does everything that it can it pulls out all the stops it does all of these things to try to keep you small and to try to keep you lower because that's all it knows. Anything beyond that is unknown and that is terrifying for the small self, for the, for the ego. Ego equals small self. And that's just what I was feeling yesterday, I think. Like, a lot of it was, I think, right before something happens and something changes the ego knows that something's about to happen and something shit is about to change even if it's for the better it still doesn't want it to change right so it does everything that it can to be like nope don't do this don't go forward and that's kind of how i was feeling yesterday <clears throat> and how <laughs> i don't say excuse me when i burp i don't apologize anymore for existing but yeah, it was just very interesting and I'm I'm so grateful for that anxiety that I was feeling and honestly letting it out right now, I am feeling a lot less anxiety now, which was kind of my goal. A lot of the reason I, well, I share things of course to help other humans and help because younger me, uh that's my cat in the background. He wants to go outside. So sorry about the noise. Younger me was always looking for like vulnerable, authentic connection. And I do it. I do it, of course, to help other people. But I also do it to help younger me and other people who relate to me and resonate with that or resonate with younger me, too, and hopefully feel less alone. <laughs> I'll tell but hopefully feel less alone and know that you're not alone on this journey I feel like this journey can feel really isolating but there are a lot of synchronicities between all of our journeys that maybe some are not as open to talk about so I hope to share about it and also releasing this stuff that may I may have felt insecure or shameful of and being able to say this stuff out loud, like before I was journaling about this, and being able to get this out of my system and get it on paper or get it out of my voice and get it out, out of here really helps clear, this is another woo-woo term, but clear the channel. Like we're all kind of channels and being able to say this stuff out loud really clear, like helps me so much. And I... I hope that it helps other people too. I hope this helps you, cute with squirrel squirrels, <laughs> cute with squirrels. <laughs> uh, and yeah, yeah, I am feeling a lot better. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that this made sense. I usually say that after the video, and then I rewatch it. And I'm like, yeah, it makes kind of sense. But this one was kind of all over the place because I was definitely feeling that anxiety that I was feeling yesterday but always reminding you that you are worthy you're worth the time that it takes in the morning I remember when I was working my nine to five job <laughs> I'll post this on my on my um 
on my profile too so if you want to if you want to rewatch it you can um I get I get distracted so no I don't I don't I can I can stay on track here I'm going, I'm like, I'm pausing because I just want to remember what I was saying. Oh yeah, um, I was feeling a lot of anxiety yesterday and that is kind of being, it was, it was brought up in this video, but oh yeah, so what I learned. You are worth the time that it takes to fill up your cup each and every day. You are worth the time. I'm good, how are you Kyle? Uh, thank you. Uh. You're worth the time that it takes to fill up your cup. It is perfect. It is what this world needs, honestly. Uh, that's that's a lesson that I learned yesterday. And... Always inviting you to be gracious with yourself. Yesterday there were moments where I felt like I was going backwards. And I felt like I could have been a lot more... I was a little critical. I won't lie. But at the same time, I was like, it's okay. So also and also letting you know that you're worthy of being your own best friend and your own biggest advocate. Because all of that shit is projected out into our reality and you deserve the best. We literally all deserve the best. I felt shameful for some of the things that I did yesterday but there is, this is a fact, and this will always be true, is that you could do nothing to make you unworthy of the best that life has to offer. I'm telling you, you could kill someone, and you would still be worthy, and you would still be loved by, maybe you would find it less in your, in your physical experience, but by the beings that you can't see, you are still incredibly loved more than you can possibly imagine. And just reminding you that you're worthy and you're powerful and that you are just enough. You are just enough just the way that you are. I did not kill anybody, no. I did not kill anybody. But this is a just in case. Like, some people... I think some people can feel a lot of shame for something that they did in the past... So the reason I say that, just in case, just in case you killed someone, it it makes a lot of other things feel better. You know, like, oh, it, what I did wasn't that bad, so you're good. And even if you did, you're still good. And that's kind of, I mean, God, good and bad is like a whole other conversation. You are still loved, no matter what you do, no matter what you do. And it's so important to remember that. It's so important to remember even if you feel like you're going 10 million steps backwards, you are still loved and it will all be okay. The sun will come out. And yeah, it was really helpful to talk about all of this. So I appreciate I appreciate y'all for being here and y'all for watching the playback, the replay, and Moo Moo and I are saying thank you for watching. Also, for those of you who don't know, oh gosh, I'm gonna, okay, I'm just gonna plug my, I have a master class in case that you, <laughs> uh, in case that you found any value in this, I have a free masterclass. It's at the link in my bio. It's called You Are Powerful Masterclass. It reminds you of your power in case you've forgotten. Even if you haven't forgotten and you want to feel a little more empowered today, please go and watch that. It's at the link in my bio. Also at lizziebelove.com or yeah, lizziebelove.com.
thank you so much for watching i hope this was helpful i also want to say that you're always doing your best in every single situation you cannot be not doing your best and your best changes from day to day and it's still enough i was having a messy as fuck day where i was just anxious as hell all day and just not feeling it and i was still enough in that day in those moments i may not have felt it every moment but it was all okay and it will all be okay and it'll all make sense too and all of these obstacles and challenges that come our way are just opportunities for us to grow and to learn love you friends love you thank you kyle uh yes thank you so much for watching i hope this was helpful and i hope everybody has an amazing day amazing weekend and knowing that you are worthy you are enough and you are so loved beyond anything that you could possibly imagine